Good evening. Welcome, everyone, to your Thursday evening dose of astronomy. I am Irene Pease, and I'm here with the Amateur Astronomers Association of New York. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we're going to be taking a little tour around parts of the solar system tonight. I'm really excited to be back and to do kind of a refresher on the planets and some really exciting upcoming things. So we have a couple of countdowns. You might want to get out your calendar if you don't have it handy. And uh, yeah, uh, just real quick. Um, again, this is uh, the Amateur Astronomers Association out of New York City. You can find out more about us at aaa.org. You can follow us on social media at aaadotorg. And you can download and use the visuals that I'll be using tonight. Open space, which you see in the background right now, uh, is free to download. It's uh, open source software, and you can find that at openspaceproject.com. And also you can find Stellarium at stellarium.org. You can also download the app. I believe the desktop version is still free and it's amazing. So, so excited. Things have been changing. There's stuff in the news. And I'm just going to mix everything up completely. And we are still going to start off with Stellarium, but we're going to start off not now. So normally I start off now, so it would be like 8 p.m., but this is actually 8 a.m. So jumping forward to the future, and we're going to go back in time to like now-ish, and we're going to just mix up everything because it's, it's just all kinds of excitement this week. Um, I'm really excited to finally take that trip to Mars that I've been promising everyone that big party on Olympus Mons. So that's where we're headed. But first, some really cool things in our sky. The sun, the sun isn't cool, the sun is hot. So let's go back in time before the sun rises tomorrow morning. Uh, there's something else up there. That's the Venus. All right. So last week, if you tuned in, we had a fabulous live stream by Wayne Coster about uh, gravitational waves and then there's been other stuff in the news this week about Venus uh, namely some scientists that were just like hey let's see if we can find this gas if we can even detect it and they're like oh yeah we found it and there's a whole lot more of it than we expected isn't that fascinating so whenever we get an unexpected result in science, it's pretty exciting. It means that there's something we don't understand and that's how we learn new things. So a lot more of this phosphine in the clouds of Venus that they detected than we ever expected based on processes that we are already aware of um, on Venus. So possibly due to biological processes, but a lot of follow-up is still needed. So we've been focusing on our outer solar system for exploration. Uh, Mars and the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, but maybe maybe it's time to look back inward and, and take a closer look at Venus because there's something that we obviously don't quite understand that's going on there. So very exciting. You can see Venus in our sky in the morning. So if you go out from New York City, it's visible till eh, maybe 6.30. So right, this is, this is about 6 a.m. for your early risers. If you're not so early, probably going to miss it. It's very bright in our sky. So Venus, again, is the third brightest object in our sky after the sun and the moon. So even at 630 from Brooklyn, you can still see it. Notice how we're in Brooklyn. And uh, this is this is the, I don't know, I'm not sure which part of Brooklyn this is. I think that's Mount Prospect. And we have, let's see, I think Flatbush Avenue over here. There's Flatbush Avenue. Park Slope, maybe. Oh no, that's Gowanus. Anyway, so yeah, this is a different view of Brooklyn that some of you might not be used to. Just kidding, it's not actually Brooklyn. Anyway, so there's Venus. All right, so Venus is out in the morning. It's been in the news. Go wave to Venus and, you know, wonder about what might be going on there. Um, we'll find out eventually because, you know, we're like that. We're curious beings. But let's go back in time a little more to late tonight. So midnight 30 tonight and we'll just go to 11 30 why pretend and of course we have mars out mars is going to be getting even bigger and brighter and i'm just going to keep talking a lot about mars <laughs> we're going there later tonight so i don't want to say too much right now but if you want to mark your calendars uh, there's a countdown to october 6 october 6th this year just in a few weeks is the close approach 
for Mars. So that's when it'll be closest to the Earth this time around, so to speak. So every two years-ish, it's about 1.88 years or so, um, we get really close to Mars and we get nicer views. And this year's another really good close approach. Not as good as two years ago in 2020, um, but I'll be talking about that in just a little bit. So Mars is out. It'll be rising if you, if you don't want to stay out till 1130. Uh, let's see, when does Mars rise? Not too early, not too late. 930-ish. I know there's some mountains over there. Mount Prospect is like blocking a little bit of our eastern horizon. Um, so yeah, after 9, 9, 930, you can go out. If you have a clear view of the eastern horizon, you can go out and see Mars. And it'll be out through the rest of the evening. So definitely check that out. I'm getting good reports and some really beautiful images from from the AAA astrophotography group and others. So really cool views of that. Next stop, more planets. Like I said, planets, planets. The next stop we have Jupiter and Saturn. All right, so I feel like I've mentioned this a few times, but since you already have your calendar out because you just marked October 6th on your calendar, there's another date that you can mark and we'll be doing a countdown and it'll hear more about it closer to date, but you wanna mark December 21 on your calendar. So if we kind of scroll through time here, kind of see if I can lock on Saturn and just scroll through the coming months, we see Jupiter and Saturn getting closer and closer together, woo! but they're also gonna be setting earlier. So by December, we're gonna have to kind of watch them um, just after sunset. So I'll rewind here. Um, yeah, just after sunset. There's, oh yeah, and there's like a, there's a, there's a time jump thing happening. You know that time jump that we do twice a year? Don't get me started. All right, so back to Jupiter and Saturn. So we're watching Jupiter and Saturn get closer and closer into the sky. And the date that I just asked you to mark on your calendar, December 21, oh my goodness, what are they gonna collide? Well, no, because Jupiter is a lot closer to us than Saturn, but wow, it looks like they're right on top of each other. So they're going to be very, very close in the sky. This does not happen every year. So every few years, you know, they come close to each other. This is exceptionally close. I shouldn't say every few years. Every, yeah, it's, it's a lot longer than that. Um, but this is exceptionally close. Like if we could rotate the, the Jovian system 90 degrees, like psh, say, oh, you don't need to be aligned with the ecliptic. Um, like these moons, like Callisto would appear over next to Saturn's moons in the sky. So this is going to be wonderful, wonderful pictures of, of Jupiter and Saturn and a bunch of their moons all together in the same field of view in telescope. So really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> should be, that should be amazing. So mark your calendars. December 21, that might already be marked on your calendar. So if you, if you actually physically pulled out your calendar or went to a calendar app, it might already say, you know, winter solstice or something on it, um, which is my segue to tonight's topic of, uh, of seasons. So winter solstice, that's when the sun is gonna be lowest in the sky for the Northern hemisphere. And of course, coming up this next week, we have our autumnal equinox, where we have the sun rising and setting due east and due west for everyone at every latitude, so northern or southern hemisphere, even the equator. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about these seasons a little bit, and I just want to kind of come back to now, right? So now we're at now. And so Earth has these seasons. And I feel like I've, I've done a, a little bit about, you know, the Earth is tilted, right? We're tilted 23 and a half degrees on our axis. So sometimes uh, our hemisphere, if you're in the northern hemisphere, we're tilted towards the sun. And then sometimes we're tilted away from the sun. So when we're tilted away, we have uh, winter. When we're tilted towards the sun, we have more direct sunlight. It's warmer. We have summer. And, and then in between, we have spring and autumn. Well... You know, our, our friendly little neighbor here, let's just fast forward to bring Mars back. Mars, the star of our show tonight. So Mars has a very similar tilt. So we, we kind of talk about Mars as being kind of like a sister planet. You know, we kind of passed over Venus when we found out what a death trap it is. 
now we might have to revisit but but recently mars has been like kind of our sister planet a bit smaller a little bit further away but a similar day uh, just just over 24 hours for a Martian day for the Mars planet to rotate once on its axis and uh, And a Martian year again, it's like 1.88 Earth years and it's tilted So we're tilted 23 and a half degrees Mars is tilted 25 degrees and So you think well Mars should have seasons too then right and Well, yeah, you'd be right So what season is it now on Mars? So that's what I, what I wanted to look at a little bit tonight. And so we're gonna pop over. Um, yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention, this is Stellarium. So some just some of the wonderful things that Stellarium can do and uh, really just viewing and planning like things that are gonna be out in the night sky. And you can even change the, you can change the landscape. So if you don't like the actual Brooklyn landscape, you can go to the Caucasus Mountains or somewhere else. But I'm gonna pop <laughs> back over to uh, to open space now, and we're actually gonna start with um, is there an image here? An image. All right. So we get um, yeah, image. There we go. So this is open space, but I, I kind of overlaid this image on it. Uh, this image is from Skylight, so way up in the corner, it's like really tiny. Um, there's a note that this is uh, Skylight, which is a Hayden Planetarium video blog. And I'm going to try to paste something into the chat, hopefully without breaking everything. Wish me luck. Okay, I don't think I broke anything there. We'll find out. <laughs> um, so if you want to see the full video, uh, so this is a video that I uh, produced at Hayden. Um, you can see the full video at the Hayden Planetarium website or on their YouTube channel. Um, but this was from a couple of years ago. So this was back from uh, 2018 uh, when there was this really super close, close approach. And so what we're seeing here is uh, the green circle in here that's the orbit of earth so earth's path around the sun and then this outer kind of circle it's actually they're both ellipses <laughs> um, that's the path of mars going around the sun and so we kind of tracked these lines that connect the two uh, planets at close approach so when earth is at this point and mars is at this point way back in April of 2014, we had a close approach. And so that's when Mars is gonna look largest in our sky. But not all close approaches are created equal, right? So you notice that at some points in their orbits, the, the, the orbital lines are closer to each other. And at some points they're further away. So this is where they were uh, two years ago, just over two years ago at the last close approach in July, 2018. So we had this huge view of Mars, um, much bigger than we had in 2010, um, and not quite as big. Well, so the one that we have this month or next month is going to be just a little bit smaller. So still pretty good, pretty good compared to a lot of these others. So still a really good close approach, but um, but there's kind of this question of like, why are they so different, right? So we know that planets orbit the sun in ellipses with the sun at one focus. So it's kind of like the center, but it's not exactly the center, it's a little off center, don't tell the mathematicians. So when Earth is closest to the sun, it's, uh, it's kind of over here, <laughs> it's on this side of the sun, um, because it's January. So in early January, that's when Earth is closest to the sun. So that's the point we call perihelion, and then it's furthest from the sun uh, in uh, in July, right? So early January, Earth is closest to the sun. Early July, Earth is farthest from the sun. But you see the orbit of Mars is a little bit flipped. So when Mars is in this part of its orbit, that's actually when it's closest to the sun. <laughs> and when Mars is over here in this part of its orbit, that's when it's furthest from the sun. So we have this mix, mix match of, uh, of the perihelion, the closest points, and the aphelions, the furthest points. 
So Earth's furthest point is really close to Mars's closest point. So they get really close together. And then Earth's closest point to the sun is near where Mars's furthest point is. So they get really far apart, like twice as far apart as they are um, when they're closer. Okay, well that's exciting, but that still has nothing to do with seasons. <laughs> that's just why Mars gets so darn big in our sky every now and then. So let's actually look at some seasons, shall we? <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you can hear the construction above me, but there's like been construction above me. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we're, we're at Earth. Um, and again, with, uh, with open space, we can kind of like fly around the universe. It's like having Google Maps for the whole universe. So we have all this data that we can load into the system and it visualizes it for us in three dimensions, actually four dimensions, because we can even move through time for a lot of that. So we're going to move away from Earth's orbit. And actually, I think what I want to do is just point out the orbits of Earth and Mars, kind of like what we were looking at um, with, the, with that still image from the video clip. Um, but let's go ahead and just kind of focus on the sun. And we'll flip turn us and look at our solar system face down, so to speak. So we're looking kind of down onto the North Pole. So if you look down on Earth's North Pole, we see the planets orbiting the sun counterclockwise. And so we have in here, we have Mercury closest to the sun and then Venus. So Venus is actually getting further away from us as it's continuing along its path. And then Earth and Mars. So I'm just going to kind of center us a little bit and then we'll start zipping through time and I might have to rotate us around a little. Um, so we're coming up on our fall equinox and I have to make sure this matches the, the cheat sheet that I drew for myself. <laughs> it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of celestial uh, figuring in, um, <laughs> in, in your head. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of turn on time so we can kind of zip around here. So one of the fun things we can do with open space is move through time. So we'll do a few days, eh, a few days, um, a few days per second, maybe a few more. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. All right. So currently, again, the Earth is like over here. And so we want to think of this direction as this is where the Earth is when we have our fall equinox. So when it's up here, we'll have our winter solstice. And then when it's over here, we'll have our spring or vernal equinox. And when Earth is down here, we have our summer solstice, right? So those are, those are the relative uh, locations of the Earth relative to the sun when we have our various seasons. So if we're down here, the, for the northern hemisphere, I should say, those are the, the northern uh, seasons. So we're tilted towards the sun. So imagine an arrow pointed up. So as the earth is spinning, uh, if I can make the earth really, really huge, um, then we would see its north pole is basically headed this way, kind of towards the top of our view here. Well, Mars, also is tilted about the same amount, but it's tilted in a different direction. So a while ago, I think we actually visited Mars and we saw that Mars had a very different North Star than we do. So we have Polaris and I think um, it was like Deneb or something was a lot closer to Mars's uh, North Pole uh, in the sky. So when, again, when Earth is over here, our pole is pointed kind of up, so to speak. But Mars's pole is pointed to the right. <laughs> so it's like rotated 90 degrees. So when we're starting our autumn, um, if we're over at this point starting our autumn, when Mars is in that a similar location, it's starting winter. So we're like off by a quarter of a year, so to speak, except our years are different. So anyway, long story short, it's winter on Mars <laughs> in the northern hemisphere. Um, so let's go ahead and just we'll pause time and actually visit some of the fun things on Mars um, that I've been wanting to check out 
for a while now. Um, there's always more fun things to see on Mars. Uh, one of the and what I what I kind of want to do is compare two locations of very different elevations. So Mars has very extreme terrain. Because it doesn't have oceans, at least not anymore, we think maybe it used to. There's a lot of evidence of ancient water flows on Mars. Um, but because it's, it's all dry, Mars actually, and even though it's a lot smaller than Earth, it has uh, more surface area than the Earth does, more dry surface area. So that's, that's a pretty neat trick. Um, <laughs> so we're going to come in here, and there were a couple of maps that I wanted to show. Let's see if we can load kind of an elevation map um, to start off. So we're starting to see some colors come in here. Um, we can see this gash. Oh yeah, there's the colors. <laughs> so elevation map. So we can see this huge gash across Mars. So that's the Valles Marineris. Uh, this huge chasm. It's you know, 3,000 miles across. Um, if we look over kind of uh, to the left of that, I guess to the west, um, we have the, um, the Tharsis region, some large volcanoes that we're going to visit in a little while. Uh, but I wanted to start off with that in that low elevation, just so that we can compare it to a larger elevation down the road. So the blue, very low elevation. Um, Mars doesn't have, again, it doesn't have oceans, so it doesn't have like what we would call sea level. So instead we use this kind of aeroid, like the zero aeroid for its like zero level of elevation. So when we see like these white parts, these are like some higher elevation and like even to the bright blue, this is Olympus Mons. So that's where we're headed for our star party. So stargazing from Olympus Mons, that's where we're headed tonight. First, let's just see the sky from uh, Valles Marineris. So we're going to come in here. I'll switch out maps to slightly higher resolution, not like the super uber high resolution, because that will crash my computer. <laughs> but uh, relatively high, we come in here. Um, I know that looks blurry, but it's loading. I'd have to give it a moment to load. Um, so right now, this is saying we're, yeah, 300 kilometers. And I kind of want to turn a little bit, see if we can get a view and look up <laughs> out along the horizon here. Whew. Yeah. So we're still definitely in space, right? Um, so we see stars. You can see stars in space when there's not like an atmosphere to scatter all the light. There's stars. It's kind of neat. So I'm not sure how long this will take to load in with everything trying to stream. <laughs> you can see some of the heights coming in. Oh, yeah. Some great detail. Um, so again, this, I mean, this, this so-called, I mean, it's canyon. It, it completely dwarfs what we call the Grand Canyon. This is like super Grand Canyon. So now we're just about 35 kilometers up, coming down. You can see it's coming into, coming into the, the atmosphere. The sky turns orange. Yeah, it's an orange atmosphere. Whoa, oh my goodness, not crashing into the mountain. <laughs> and we can see <laughs> down to one, and we're less than a kilometer. Now we're actually negative meters, so we'll go to about a kilometer below the aeroid. So that would be like, like a kilometer below kind of that the standard average or mean elevation on Mars. And we can see like this thick atmosphere. Um, the stars during the day, that's kind of an open space effect. Um, we see the same thing when we look on, in, on Earth in open space. But you can see like this really thick atmosphere down here. Um, so you wouldn't really be able to see the stars from this part of Mars during the day, but um, but you'd see mountains and and uh, be able to kind of rove around, just kind of zip around through here, and yeah, really cool. So instead of going hiking there, we are going to head off much further to the west. 
we're going west yeah we're going way west so west of uh, Valus Marineris we have uh, Noctis Labyrinthus this kind of maze I guess labyrinth like maze Noctis Labyrinthus and then past that we have the the humongous volcanoes so Olympus Mons is a shield volcano so it's gently sloping it's it's not like like the volcanoes of the Andes or the Ring of Fire on Earth. Let me just pause this so we don't accidentally miss it. Um, but it's very, it's very gently slope, very gently <laughs> sloping. Um, so let me just come back up here. I think we have some of the other volcanoes there. Keep going. Yeah, three huge ones, and then the even huger one, Olympus Mons. And even from here, you can almost see like Olympus Mons starting to stick out of the atmosphere. Ah. Okay, so this whole thing, the whole shebang, so to speak, um, is about the size of Arizona. Like this is Arizona, right? If, okay, if you've never been to Arizona, it's big, okay? So a lot bigger than the Eastern United States. Um, the, the Western states are pretty huge. Um, it's like the size of some of the countries in Europe like the big countries. <laughs> um, so what we're headed towards though is this caldera at the top. So you can see like the caldera that's like a huge crater that is at the top of, uh, of a lot of shield volcanoes and other volcanoes where that part has kind of uh, sh sunk in. Um, we can turn, yeah, so we can turn this in. So big mountains on earth right we have mount everest i even wrote down numbers so mount everest what 8.8 .8, less than nine kilometers high all right so we say that's that's the the highest mountain on earth but it has a it has a kind of a an extra like extra like jump start so it uh it actually starts on <laughs> the high plateau and then it goes up from there okay so that's as high as you get on earth nine kilometers above sea level. Okay, and then it's kind of cheating because it's already starting on like this really high Tibetan plateau. Mauna Kea, the big, on the big big island of Hawaii, that is, uh, what does it say, like about six kilometers above sea level, but it actually starts below sea level. So that mountain rises up above the ocean from the base of the ocean floor. So Mauna Kea is the tallest mountain on Earth at around 10 kilometers. Okay, so let's, let's look at all this stuff to load in. So you have nine kilometer-ish, almost nine kilometer, Everest. Um, and then we have 10 kilometer Mauna Kea. That's pretty impressive. Olympus Mons. Let's let this load in. 22 kilometers. So it's more than twice the height of Mauna Kea. More than twice the height of the, the tallest mountain on Earth. Twice! Like, and it's, you know, the size of Arizona, which is not tiny, right? So it has this whole system of calderas at the top. Oh, there they come. And uh, kind of like like different different piece of it, pieces of it that have caved in from different ancient flows. So for a shield volcano, again, you get like just these gentle flows. It's not eruptive. It's not like blasting stuff way into the sky, um, but it just kind of slowly oozes. So it's, it's the same type of volcano as Mauna Kea. It's just a lot bigger. Um, so this caldera system is about 80 kilometers across. All right, so that's like eh, not quite Long Island. <laughs> um, and this cliffs, as we see the cliffs, um, when they start to load in, actually are three kilometers deep. So you get up to this rim around here, and then it just poof, drops down three kilometers, right? So this is these are like serious volcanoes. Mars doesn't mess around when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to terrain. It has amazing, amazing uh, canyons, amazing uh, extinct volcanoes, but volcanoes nonetheless. Um, just some really beautiful terrain. So uh, if you've read the, oh, there we go. Isn't that gorgeous? 
But if you've read the, the Kim Stanley Robinson books, uh, Red Mars, Green Mars, Blue Mars, um, I read most of them a while ago. It's been a little while. So the, the one thing that, that really stuck out to me, and I just, I just loved the imagery for this, was um, I think early on, it was like Red Mars, there was a, a, like a caravan that traveled up Olympus Mons and had like a big star party. Well, maybe they didn't call it a star party. It was maybe another kind of party. But I imagine it as a big star party in the caldera of Olympus Mons. Because there, as we're coming down towards the, the surface inside the caldera, you can see not nearly as much atmosphere between us and the stars, right? So at the top of Olympus Mons, inside this caldera, even if you, I mean, especially up on the rim when you have, you know, another three kilometers in altitude, you can actually see stars during the day. So I think that would be the most fabulous star party. You just like go on and on. It'll, you know, get darker at night. But um, I vote for a star party on Mars. So if anyone, anyone wants to, to join me, like zip over to Mars, see if we can't star party around. Um, you can see, you know, well, the sun will be out. So don't look too close to the sun, obviously. But all these other stars, okay? sun, Milky Way, probably won't see the Milky Way quite that bright. But the sun will also be a little bit dimmer than it is here on Earth just because it's further away. So um, at least 50% or maybe up to 50% further away depending on where Mars is in its orbit. So a lot of atmosphere near the horizon, but then just looking up into the sky, gazing, star partying, Big Dipper, you, you don't even have to learn new constellations. The constellations are still there for you. So if you recognize the Dipper, you can still pick that out. And it might point to Earth's North Star, but again, Mars has a very different star because it's tilted uh, in a very different direction to have those different seasons. So of course, the best season for star parties is the winter when you have the longer nights. So if you can get yourself to Mars in the next six months while it's still winter in the, the northern hemisphere, which is where Olympus Mons is, um, that's, uh, that's my recommendation for star party location. So I'm just gonna leave us here on Mars. I know normally, <laughs> normally I take us back to Earth, but there's other stuff happening here and I, I don't really wanna come back in no hurry. So we'll just put the credits up here. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me for your Thursday evening dose of astronomy. Again, I'm Irene Pease with the Amateur Astronomers Association of New York. You can check us out at our website, see what's coming up. We have classes, we have meetups, we have special interest groups, we have uh, star parties for our members. Public stargazing uh, is, a, is a little tenuous right now, but check our calendar, check our website. Um, you can follow us on social media at A-A-A-D-O-T-O-R-G. And again, the visuals that I've been using uh, in the background right now, you see open space, which you can find at openspaceproject.com. And earlier when I was pretending we were in Brooklyn, but it was actually the Caucasus Mountains, that was Stellarium, which you can find and download at stellarium.org. Thank you so much for joining us and be safe out there.